Well, my hood scoop just ripped off as a truck went by. I guess some air must have gone underneath of it. Then it ripped it off and you can see, you know, some of the pieces still left. I was able to find the hood scoop. It's surprisingly in one piece over here, but I don't know how I'm gonna fix this. Like obviously fiberglassing it, yes. But that was, oh, that was insane. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way how to fix this. And now see, I had this crack on this side, but now there's a crack on this side too. So, wow, that was insane. Yeah, this semi truck went by and air caught it and it went flying. And I mean, I'm here, it was a good 200 feet that way. Holy crap. Hi everyone. So, welcome back to Katarina's Garage. My name is Katarina Lloyd and as you can see, well, an incident happened on, this was Monday. Um, but to start though, like, this was just after Street Machine Weekend. I was coming home and, well, the, the hood scoop kind of went flying. And I know exactly how it occurred. So, and what you can do to actually prevent this, other than of course making it a fully functional, because these weren't functional from the factory. This is a factory pace car hood scoop, and it went flying and cracked. You can see a big crack right here. Just absolutely, you know, hurt. And on the back side here, you can see it's right through it, right? There's a little piece down here, Ch chunk taken out as well, chunk taken out here, and chunk taken out here, as well as right over here. And those pieces I actually do have, because if you saw in the video, they were stuck in my hood still, and they just ripped out, because I have all the pieces that ripped off right here, right? And it's all... Just straight up fiberglass with the studs and everything and like I had a comment actually that I wanted to address because that comment made no sense to me. They said that I used so much like JB Weld and stuff like that and did this not safe and I'm going, I didn't use any JB Weld. The only thing that I did was years ago is when I got this car, the hood scoop was not mounted to the car and the reason for that was it was missing a couple of studs. So I added those studs in, and just so that it did not move around, I actually used two part epoxy with the stud to make sure that it stayed in place. I did not drill the holes in my hood or anything like that, and you know, all that stuff, but, uh, cause apparently, you know, somebody said that I like JB welded it to my hood or something, I'm going, why would I do that? Like fiberglass on metal just doesn't work as well, but especially like that, like, and I thought about maybe just molding this to the hood itself but the problem is it's still fiberglass interacting with metal right it doesn't work as well because they expand and contract differently but actually so what happened with this and i discovered this on friday because i did have an issue with this attempting to come off on friday and i quickly fixed it but there was one that i could not fix and that is right here. So this stud actually fell out because you can tell the threads in there, they're, they're, it's just broken. Like you can see, you know, all that coming off. So that's one of the ones that I did the two part epoxy to put back in. And unfortunately, well, it's uh, when the truck came by, I was on highway 23, just north of Champion. And the air got underneath of it and sent it sailing sky high. So now I am looking to figure out what I'm going to do with this. Am I going to fix the hood scoop? And that way, am I going to maybe get it 3D scanned and make a metal one and weld it in? Or am I going to just scrap the whole idea, weld in the holes, um, find another Mustang bash for the front, which I know where one is actually, 
um, that will look really good, paint this area black and go from there. And I truly just don't know. Um, I could also potentially, I have wanted to do like capri fenders and quarters on this car. So I could just do a complete front clip swap with the hood and everything to a capri and do it that way. And you know, find myself a capri RS hood scoop in the future because I think they're the best looking. Make it functional because they actually have the two vents up front that are non-functional, but you could make it functional. And just do it that way, right? So many things to think about, but I don't know, we'll see for sure. Um, it's just that whole thing. But something I did want to talk about though is exciting thing though, because you might see this shirt and go, that's a pretty cool shirt. Well, it's actually, so you can see my logo right here, right? And on the back side, you can see my car on the back, which my friend over at Hartley Motorsports actually made me this shirt. And she can also do uh, custom designs for you. She can make shirts, t-shirt, like you know, tank tops, hoodies, whatever you want. If you just want digital art, she can also make your car into digital art, which is what that picture actually is. Um, and she does a really incredible job. And uh, yeah, I'm truly very, very excited about this shirt, to be honest, I'm just very happy. I had a little incident with it the other night it somehow got some pink dye on it, which I don't even know how that happened. I was just cleaning it myself, just by hand, and all of a sudden, I hang it up and I look back at it and go, why is there all this pink dye on it? What the hell? That made no sense to me, but I cleaned it and it's all good now. So thankfully, it's all good. Um, so yeah, but if you have an idea of what I should do with this, let me know. Because like, I do have a... Um, I do have a fiberglass kit that I could use um, and go from there, but we'll see for sure. To be honest, I just, I don't know what to do with this. Because, and now alternatively, like if you want to combat this yourself and there are ways to do it. So if you have just a bolt on hood scoop and you're worried about this potentially happening, because this can happen, it's not common. It's a little rare actually. But basically is make sure there are holes, which honestly there are in this, right? You can see the two holes right here for what was, but I don't think they go all the way through though. No, they don't. Um, well, that one I think does, but regardless though, is have holes that will let air just get into your engine bay if air gets underneath your hood scoop, right? Like say up here or something, right? Or even back here or whatever, right? Just make sure that it's non-structural, put a couple holes in, you're fine. So... And the one thing is, because I never obviously painted this area. I just left it how I got the car. And, and actually, you can see, it actually did bend a little bit here. I don't know if you can really see that properly, but it is a little bent there. But I can just grab a hammer and quickly unbend that, no big deal. And over here, there's apparently a little bit of Bondo. Not much, though. Just a little bit, so I could sand that down and, you know, get it all nice and straight again. But... Yeah, I just, I don't know what to do. Because I could just, you know, weld these holes back up and paint it black. And then just put the stock Mustang badge back in here. Because actually, I know where one is. And Keith might actually donate it to the cause. We'll see. Um, but, I don't know. What do you guys want to see, to be honest? Because I am curious. Um, you know, and it's just it's sad. Because first, you know, the fog lights that I didn't have in for very long went. And then now, the head scoop, right? Which I have a new set of fog lights, I just haven't mounted them in yet. But, it just it sucks. You know, it really does. And I wish this didn't happen. I wish I wasn't talking about this to you guys. And now if you're wondering, the crack on this side, that was there when I got it. So, and I never really addressed that one. But, and you can see a couple of cracks along the side here, here, and here. So, it's a lot of fiberglass work, right? Like a ton of it, so... Truthfully, I don't know, but something though, I do want to talk about actually, because Street Machine Weekend has come and gone. That's the first time this car has been down there, and I want to say the first time that, uh, like just to Lethbridge in general, that this car has been down, but also to Street Machine Weekend, which is an amazing weekend. If you haven't, go check out the couple of videos that I actually did on there. One was of... Checking out some of the more unique and cool vehicles at um, um, 
at the show and shine at golf gardens and then also there was the one of me cruising around there's even a live stream as well but i the quality of that did not really turn out that well so that's fine the video is still up if you want to go check it out you can but um yeah it was truly an incredible weekend and i can't wait till next year i just hope that something like this doesn't happen again but i actually experienced something that i never thought i would with this setup because i actually vapor locked the car um i have a video of the fuel actually boiling in the fuel line you can see it because i have a clear filter on the car you know just a plastic one it was boiling the fuel so um yeah it's just one of those deals right and honestly i i dealt with it it was surprising though because so if you know left birch at all i was deep south actually at the dairy queen that's not too far from costco and i was there for a good hour and a half just trying to cool it off and it just wasn't really working too well so eventually i got it to where okay i could run the car if i just kept the revs up and so i drove it from there all the way to cooldale and then back to the north side where i was staying and it still was vapor locking which surprised me because that's a good 30 40 kilometers of driving and on highway speeds right so you'd think that it'd be fine but anytime i came to a stop the one thing is i i did a little bit of a trick because i could not really get my footing quite right to hit the clutch hit the brake and hit the gas at the same time um i just couldn't get it to work that well so what i did was once i got it down to about 2000 rpm and first to a stop i'd put it into neutral and then i would have my uh foot on the gas a little bit just to rev it up and i would use the handbrake to stop it <laughs> so and it worked it worked because the car would not run at all if you did not have the revs up period because it was vapor locking and if you don't know what vapor locking is basically when uh the liquid fuel actually it gets so hot that it starts to boil it starts to create gas vapors which the car is not designed to run off of the gas vapors or at least that many of the vapors and now if i had a gas vapor car but you know like if i converted it it wouldn't be a problem but i don't have that so which you have to do some interesting things to do that i've been tempted to do it but i just haven't but yeah unfortunately you know it's just one of these things and it just it sucks that this happened but what can you do right there's nothing that would have changed this because there are holes that go into the engine bay as it is so it's just too much air because like on highway 23 this was just from five kilometers or so north of champion so i'm coming this way big loaded semi is coming the other way and the air just from that semi and it flew a good 100 feet or more because i stopped pretty quick i didn't like lock up my brakes but i stopped pretty quick and i was surprised i had like no emotion about it i still don't really have much emotion about it it's it's surprising um and it's maybe because i had this idea of you know doing like a capri swap or something a little different with it i love this scoop but i don't know we'll see so yeah and like to be honest so like in explaining my whole weekend so i got down on friday uh friday afternoon i stopped by um you know i get in i stop at the house that i'm staying at it's my friend jay he's awesome to be honest haven't seen him in years to be honest so it was just nice to kind of catch up again um and then cruising about on friday friday was uh friday is when i had the vapor locking issue because going up and down my mcgrath and revving the car and stuff like that and i was just revving the car because like people were asking for it and they wanted it so why not right and it was fun plus i actually got spotted uh by there was a fan of mine somewhere uh down Mary mcgrath to be honest in is that across from the golf course i can't remember but anyway so he um or somebody just yelled out katarina's garage as i'm driving by and that was that was awesome to be honest and that's the one thing i got noticed by a few people I saw some really incredibly rare and cool cars that I don't know if I'll be able to see again, like an old 78 TVR 3000M, uh, 1987 uh, Ford Capri, which is really cool. And you know, there was a bunch of other things like a Hemi, 69 Hemi GTX and just a bunch of really cool stuff, a bunch of really cool customs as well. So, ah, but yeah, anyways, 
Um, if you're... It, the one thing is, if you ever get the opportunity to go to Street Wheelers, Street Machine Weekend, do it. You will have so much fun. Even if you don't have a car to bring, that's fine. You can set up a chair along Mary McGrath, check out all the cars. You can go to the 100 footer. Um, some years they do slaloms. This year they actually, out at Warner, they actually did have this tournament Burnham event where Whistling Diesel and the Diesel Brothers gang was there. And um, it was basically just a big burnout competition and stuff like that. Plus there was a proper car show as well. So yeah, it was just a ton of fun. And I can't wait for next year. So anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, like the video, comment, anything, comment what you want to see down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as well, follow me on TikTok at Katarina.Garage and on Instagram. Same thing, Katarina's Garage as well. Uh, if you want to contact me, again, those are the two sources you can do it. My email is also in my bio if you want to email me as well. But, um, yeah, anyways, thank you all for watching. And, yeah, we'll see what we do with this thing, to be honest. At least it's still, like, running and driving good and everything. So, yeah, anyways. Bye!